Greetings. This is Dr. Derek Ong with the second video on hypothesis and testing. You would have already um, watched the first video on the research process using quantitative analysis. So, as I mentioned, we are in the um, uh, trail of wanting to do analysis using uh, quantitative measures. Uh, but before that, um, there's one section that we need to first understand, and that is how we can derive hypothesis and how we can test it using quantitative analysis. Now, um, basically, what is a hypothesis? Now, a hypothesis is kind of like a statement that you make uh, in your research that you are postulating and say that, yes, this is the claim that you want to make. So for instance, if you want to claim that uh, attendance helps students with their results, and that would be a hypothesis. Yeah. Uh, the difference between that hypothesis and the null hypothesis is that the null hypothesis assumes that nothing uh, is uh, is is of miss. That means a uh, null hypothesis usually has uh, things like uh, there's no difference or um, there is no relationship. So in your research, you are postulating that there is a uh, difference and that there is a uh, relationship. So here what we do is uh, looking at uh, the testing of this hypothesis. Yeah, which is a procedure of making the inference about a population. So what you have here is the population of interest. I'm trying to circle this thing around, right? And the sample is actually taken from the population. And you want to infer this sample to that population, which means that you are taking from the sample and you want to say that this sample is a good representation of this population. So whatever hypothesis that you hypothesize from this sample, uh, you use statistics to gather enough evidence and support so that this hypothesis can then be inferred or generalized to the population of interest. Yeah, so that means that hypothesis testing allows us to determine whether enough statistical evidence exists to conclude that a belief, i.e. a hypothesis, or as I mentioned about a statement, about a parameter, it could be a mean, it could be a, a difference, it could be a correlation or a support, is supported by the data. So, when we do hypothesis testing, our most important thing that we want is to get enough evidence to support your hypothesis. Yeah, so that's what we want. We want to support your hypothesis. Now, we cannot do that if, let's say, we do not reject the H0. Yeah, as I mentioned about the H0 is basically whether or not uh, there's no difference. It's, it's kind of like the status quo. So therefore, the objective of us doing the hypothesis testing is that we want to reject the H node. Yeah, we want to reject the H node with enough evidential support. Now, let's just first understand what the alpha value is. The alpha value, I'm trying to draw the alpha here, is basically what we call as your type 1 error. So usually alpha value, we always set it at 0.05% or 5%, yeah? And this is what we know as the maximum allowable error that we can tolerate in any hypothesis testing, okay? That is the layman term for it, but the more statistical term for it is called the type 1 error, which is also called the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it is actually true. Now, I know you're going to get a little bit confused, but let's just put it this way. 
every time I do a hypothesis testing, I cannot make more than 5% error in my decision. No more than 5% error. Okay? So that's basically what alpha value is, is to set a threshold level. All right? And um, then we need to compare it with something when we do our tests. So when we do our tests, we have what we call the p-value. Now the p-value is also what we know as, or it's called as the sig value in SPSS, right? You will see a sig value coming out in the in the um, uh, what do you call it the uh, results. So the sig value is what we are going to compare with our alpha value. All right. So bear with me. So what we want to do is we want to do our hypothesis testing, gather enough support to support our hypothesis. And by doing that, we want to reject the H node. Yeah, but what decides whether we reject the H node or not depends on the alpha value that is set and also what is the sig value or the true alpha value that we get. So, for instance, if let's say alpha value is set at 5% and we do our hypothesis testing and we get a sig value of 0 0.02. So remember, we want to reject H naught. Question here is, do we have enough evidence to support H naught? Sorry, I mean, do we have enough um, evidence to support our hypothesis? 5% is our threshold. This basically means that if we were to reject the H naught, we will only be committing an error of 2%. 2%? And this 2% is less than the 5% threshold. So hence, we can safely say that we can reject the H naught. As opposed to if we have a sig value of 0 0.67 so this 6.7 percent is definitely higher than our five percent and our objective is still the same we want to reject the h node so by doing the rejection of h node we will be committing an error of 6.7%, which is way higher than 5%. So hence, we take the opportunity to say that we do not reject the H node. So do bear in mind that the first scenario, we have enough evidence to support our hypothesis. And in the second scenario, we do not have enough evidence to support our hypothesis. Therefore, we do not reject H node. And uh, that means that if we draw a curve, this would be our 5%. And this is what we call as the acceptance region. And this is what we call the rejection region for our H0. So in the first scenario, it comes here. And in the second scenario, it comes here. All right. If you have any questions about understanding this, just remember that we check our SIG value against the 5% threshold. And if the SIG value is lower than the threshold, then we can safely reject the H naught. If our SIG value is higher than the 5%, then we do not reject the H node. Thank you for watching.